What's going on guys? The iPad Pro 10.5 inch is finally here. I'm very excited to take a look at it today with you and compare it to the existing 9.7 inch model. So it was long rumored to happen that Apple would release a slimmer bezel version of the iPad Pro and finally it's here with the all new 120 hertz display. So I'm very excited to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and dig in and see how it compares. So I have it here. I got it really late in the day. I think I'll go with the Dewalt today, new one on the list. But anyways, jump in here. Oh, that's sharp. I like that. All right. So I actually got the 512 gigabyte model, which is just crazy on an iPad, the largest storage on an iOS device ever. And wow, those are some slim bezels. That's crazy. I mean, Take a look at that, the comparison. It's not that much slimmer, but it just seems much, much cleaner looking. I love that. I seriously love this wallpaper. I mean, it looks so good with the rose gold color. I wonder what the other boxes look like, but let's go ahead and jump in here. Dang. I feel like this is gonna feel like one of the most high-tech devices ever once I have it in my hand. It looks amazing. I mean, much better than I thought it would. So as you can see, I got the Wi-Fi cellular 10.5 inch, 512 gigabytes. That's a ridiculous amount. This one is 256 and I think I filled up just a little bit of that, like 30 gigs. Don't know why, but I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. So, all right, jumping into here. It's a shame they didn't give it the new virtual home button that the iPhone 7 got. I thought that would have been a pretty cool combo, but that new display I think more than makes up for the lack of the virtual home button. Yeah, it's definitely a clicker one. But wow, that looks so high tech. I seriously love that. Wow, this is just, I think, to the point of comfort where uh, your fingers can just grasp at the edge barely. Imagine if there was no bezel at all. That would be a very uncomfortable device unless Apple had some sort of uh, finger or palm rejection on the edges here. The only logical solution to a device with no bezels whatsoever. But wow, that is just amazing how far Apple has come in the iPad tech. Okay, so here it is. And uh, it looks very, very similar to the old one. So putting this one right next to it, size-wise, oh, it is just a tiny bit bigger with a slightly bigger display. That certainly makes up for it, but it's not heavy at all. I mean, it feels almost the same as the old one. So very similar positioning here of the uh, SIM card slots orientation of the speakers and everything is almost the same. It doesn't have the FCC labels on the outside anymore, which is actually a very clean look. So the bands are actually the same size. The camera is just a little bit bigger. So that's the 12 megapixel shooter uh, now instead of the old eight megapixel one. It's got four LED flash, which is much brighter. And the microphone has moved to over here. Also I've got the speakers on top, very, very clean looking. It's the front where it mostly shines, slightly bigger, but I think a worthy upgrade. So I'm gonna go ahead and power that on. And while that's powering on, I wanna take a look at what's going on inside. So, um, same old, same old. Oh, slightly faster charger here included, cool. So uh, now that we've got that unboxed, one thing's left and to take a look at the software inside and how it performs. Wow, guys, I can already tell the difference. I've just been using it for two seconds with the menus, but I can already tell how smooth this display is. It's ridiculous. The animations are essentially running at 120 frames per second, and it's just mind blowing how smooth it is. I didn't think it would look this good. Wow. It feels faster, but I know it's not. It's just so silky smooth, the animations. Now, can you imagine this on the upcoming iPhone? I think that would just be incredible to have it be this smooth. And you better bet Apple's bringing this technology over to the new iPhone, probably with True Tone sensors as well. But wow, just in the settings, I didn't think I would, I would be wowed alone. And there it is. So. Let's try out some of those animations, launching an app. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. It is so smooth. Oh man. So I'm going to set these up side by side just so you guys can tell the difference. But wow, Apple, well done. That's so crazy because I just went to my iPhone to check on the weather 
and it feels like it's stuttering. This display has ruined normal Apple displays for me. I feel like this is the future of all Apple products. They're all going to get this new uh, screen technology with the 120 hertz refresh rate. Not only does it help with efficiency overall, it just it's a huge wow factor when someone comes up and starts using this. It's, it's incredible. Um, I haven't been this wowed by something from Apple in a very long time, so I think that speaks for itself. The display is just incredible. Sharp, crisp, but also very, very fluid. All right, so take a look at this. I'm gonna be swiping on both at the same time, and it's very hard to tell until you're in person, but you kind of see a stutter now. <laughs> It, it feels like I'm spoiled already after a few minutes with the new iPad Pro, but the old one is now stuttering and the new one is like, wow, it is, it feels like liquid butter. It's unlike anything I've experienced on a mobile device before. So launching applications will feel much better now. So one, two, three. Oh my gosh, there's no stutter on the new one. And I can't really sync these rights. Let's try another one, one, two, three. Yeah, it's on iOS 11 over here, but that really doesn't make a difference here. Okay, I feel like I've talked too much about this a feature in particular, but the display is miles better on the new one and it's very significant. All right, so talking specs on the left with the new iPad Pro 10.5, you've got four gigabytes of RAM, which is an all new for any iOS device once again. You've got 2.4 gigahertz processor, A10X, and on the right, of course, two gigabytes of RAM. It's one less than the larger iPad Pro from the last generation that is, and 2.2 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and get a Geekbench result going here, see what we can get. Of course, it's a tablets, so you're gonna get a lot of fingerprints on them. The older one seems a little bit worse than the newer one. I believe Apple was saying they have a new coating. Of course, it has to rub it in and finish first, but on iOS 10.3.2, I got a crazy score of 9,275. I mean, that's a weak computer that can run Mac OS if Apple chose that it could. Now it does have a single of 3923, which is about what the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus gets, maybe a little bit less there, but wow, what a crazy processor. The old one, about half the multi-core score, a little bit more, 5,000, and a single of about 3,000. So. You can definitely see the improvement here. Apple continues to completely obliterate with their in-house CPU game. All right, and here are the results of the GPU test in GFX Bench. So this is the same test being run on both, and wow, the new one really blows the old one out of the water. Almost double the score in some areas. In some, it's essentially the same, but wow. I mean, in every way, this thing is better CPU and GPU wise. So the new one is 1.03 pounds, the old one is 0.97. The difference between them is almost indiscernible. It's just the size is just a little bit bigger, so it's a little harder to hold with one hand. I mean, that's the only thing I've noticed between them size wise. Otherwise, they're pretty dang close. Now, another big area that the new iPad Pro 10.5 inch benefits from is the Apple Pencil. So even using the old pencil you were using with your 9.7 inch version, you're gonna notice some increased benefits thanks to this display. It's gonna be much smoother to draw with using this pencil. You can see that it is more sensitive to it and it's a much faster refresh rate here. You're gonna be able to see that reflected even when using the Apple Pencil. So wow, it is just so fluid, it feels like you're actually drawing in real time, more so than on the old one. Never thought I'd say it, but I don't think I wanna go back to that one anymore after using this, it's crazy. So if you do have the old one though, are you gonna to wanna to upgrade over these little things? I mean, probably not warranted for me personally, but depending if you're a media artist, if you take drawing seriously, it could certainly be worth it to you. I mean, it's a cleaner device. Uh, you get more for your money power-wise, but it's not like the old one was lacking in that department either. So. The Apple Pencil certainly sees an improvement here as well, but it was never that bad to begin with. The cool thing about the new iPad Pro is it will work with some of your older accessories like the Apple Smart Keyboard. You don't necessarily need to upgrade that. It will still work here just like that. Super cool. So on the left is the iPad Pro. This is essentially comparing the 6S camera to the iPhone 7 camera. Very same sensors, so things are just gonna pop a little bit more. The uh, Contrast is a little bit better on the left here. And uh, 4K, of course, you'll bring out more detail. But the sun is setting. So, oh man, this is kind of hard to hold to at once. Uh, but sun is setting. You can start to see more dynamic range on the new iPad Pro 10.5. It is a little harder to use with one hand, that's for certain. 
Um, so there's a green color for you. Definitely pops a little more on the left, I can tell. So definitely more detail. Look in the background, there's not as much noise going on on the left with the new iPad Pro. What a great camera. I mean, it's the iPhone 7 camera, of course, so it's gonna look good. All right, guys, just to finish this review up, I wanted to say this thing is an absolute testament to Apple's innovation, fixing the little things that no other company would, and not even fixing them, just improving those things, like the True Tone display when they originally introduced it, the four speakers. I mean, the iPad is actually one of Apple's most innovative products lately. They've been adding so much great stuff to it. I'm in love, seriously, this display, Unreal, I want it on the next iPhone. I would actually be very upset if the new iPhone didn't come with this new ProMotion display with 120 hertz. It seriously makes all others feel dated. Like I just don't wanna go back to them. So at the end of the day, my verdict is if you guys don't have an iPad and you're deciding between the new 9.7 or the 10.5, definitely shell out the extra money and go for the 10.5, you know? The new display, how cool it is, the slim bezels, the, you know, just the perfect size, I think between the larger 12.9 Pro and the smaller ones is this one right here. I mean, the speakers, I don't even have to cover those. They're amazing. Since my last review, the cameras, it gets the best of the best of everything. And not only that, the updated uh, Apple Pencil support with the new display is actually awesome. iOS 11 is going to bring out a lot of new features uh, that I'm not showing you guys right now because it's running iOS 10. But of course, you're going to get the new dock, the updated uh, multitasking, all of these great things you're gonna get on the new one as well. But this definitely doesn't make the old one bad in any way. It's still completely capable, just a little bit of a smaller device. It'll do everything the new one can, just not in as great of a fashion. So thanks for watching, guys. Just wanted to show you what this thing is. I'm blown away. Apple has done a very, very good job here, and I actually really like this new sleeve as well. So I can confidently say this is a great, great upgrade. You know, not those little tiny speed improvements. This actually brings a lot to the table. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you do end up getting one, enjoy it. Peace.